going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds. Today, we're here to talk about a brand new car on the channel. That's right. We're at IAA Insurance Auto Auctions, and we are in the Ram, of course. Uh, we don't have a trailer on it yet because we're not ready to tow yet, guys. We got to hit 500 miles for the break-in period to be over with before we can start towing. Now, if you look up here, you can see I've driven, uh, I bought this truck with 28 miles on it. I've driven it personally myself, 437.4 miles, and we are averaging 19.4 miles a gallon. At 437 miles, I still have over an eighth of a tank. I've got just under a quarter of a tank of gas. The DEF fluid is still full, so apparently this thing does not use very much DEF at all. The truck is doing great, so I wanted to give you that update. But I also wanted to tell you, we won a 2006 GMC Envoy Denali. Guys, 5.3 liter all-wheel drive V8. I got the Carfax report back at the house. I'm going to show it to you. The Carfax is impressive. I mean, super impressive. Two owners, 195,000 miles, and a lot of work was recently done to it. We got it for $925 winning bid, $1,212 out the door. It's weird. I've never had one come out like that, but $1,212 out the door. Now we're going to pick it up and see if we scored big. I don't know. What do you, I'm thinking I'm thinking for as cheap as it went, it's got to have like a transmission problem, right? That's what I'm thinking. I don't know. You comment below. Let's go check it out. Well, guys, we just did the deed. We went in there and paid for it, and the title is not good. This is from Pedal, <laughs> Pedal LLC. Uh, this is not going to be good, guys. This is not going to be good. Pedal is a company that buys junk cars for basically like real cheap. Um, now, I, I can't say that I have any experience using them at all. I don't, but it's been my experience as a consumer um, from Copart before. I did not know that they used uh, insurance auto auctions as well, but it's just been my experience that these cars generally have some kind of pretty serious mechanical issue. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, and I'm not upset about it. I'm sure a lot of you are like, well, aren't you pissed off? No, I'm not. I'm not. I mean, it's a gamble, guys. Every one of these cars that I buy is an absolute gamble, and truthfully, that's, that's part of the excitement. It's part of the fun because you don't know what you're going to get. So there is, a, I think there's a website for Pedal, P-E-D-D-L-E. -E. Um, obviously, this is not sponsored, but if you got some old car laying around or something and you just want it gone, hey, you know, you might check these guys out and maybe you'll see your old car on my channel or another YouTuber's channel at some point because Pedal will come out. They'll buy your car from you. They'll pick it up and tow it away, and they'll send it to auction just like this. And you know, high bid wins. Sometimes you win, and sometimes you lose. What do you guys think? I think we need to quit talking about it. We need to go take a look at it and find out for ourselves. Did we win, or I, I'm still... Remember when I said transmission? I'm still thinking transmission, guys. God, I hope not, but... I think it's going to be a transmission problem. About to find out. Oh, man, this is actually nice. Maybe the other side is smashed or something, huh? Yeah, there's got to be something seriously wrong with this if they let it go for a thousand bucks. A little bit of light scraping on this side. A couple little scrapes right here. And right here. Whatever. Okay, we got lights on. I think it's going to start. Oh my God, I'm nervous. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, let's straighten the steering wheel out some. You ready? Okay, everything on the dash is on. Uh, fired right up. It's got a misfire. Yeah, she's got a misfire. It may clear up as it warms up some. It does okay we, oh the ac just came on ac came on and it is cold all right let's turn the uh where's the damn buttons there we go let's turn the ac fan down a little bit all right ac is good yeah she's got a good miss though guys she's got a real real solid misfire See if it clears up a little bit. Uh, 
I don't know. It's got a little bit of a tap. Heated seats, bottom and top heated seats, okay? Important window does work. That window works. Those are just, those are the important windows. Sunroof. Sunroof works as well. Up and down and back. All right, so far so good. Those are the side windows in the rear and those are working as well. Yep, side windows work. Okay, that window is working. And that window is working. Wow, okay. Rear heat and air conditioning. We got two sets of key fobs. Uh, let's try four wheel drive. Does it engage in auto? Yes, it does. Look at that. Four wheel drive appears to work. Four high. Yep, shifted. Four low. Probably got to put it in neutral. I just felt it. Yeah, it shifts into four wheel drive in all gears. Put it back in two. Yeah. Okay, so 4x4 appears to work. It runs. Does it go into gear? Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember if these are the mirrors that auto fold out. No. I'm going to have to manually pull those out. Let's pop the hood. Check the back here real quick. Man, this is clean, isn't it? Good night. This is gorgeous, guys. Wow. Okay, one. I guess that's how you get into the third row seats back there. They look good. Hey, you want to talk about a good Uber vehicle right here? Uber XL? This is it, man. Look at that. The struts are good back here. It's got a little, I don't know what the hell this is for, some kind of a tray. Let's see what we got down here. Oh, an air, an air compressor. So most likely, there's a compressor. Urgh. We're not going to mess with it. But in here should be an air compressor. All right. Let's fill that misfire. It really, it feels like it's just misfiring on one cylinder, guys. Like just one cylinder. Let's pull this mirror out. I, I do hear a slight ticking under the hood, though. I don't know, man. So far, I'll be honest, like preliminary inspection, I feel pretty good about it. I do, I feel pretty good about it. Damn thing could just need a tune-up, which is easy on this. It looks like someone's done a tune-up on it before. Well, with 200,000 miles, I'm sure they have. You see the spark plugs, hopefully? Hopefully you see down there. Coil packs are up top, plugs are down there. This may be a thing if we have a bad coil, we have a bad spark plug. But I'm going to save the best for last because the Carfax report on this is insane. Like the amount of work that's been done to it and was just recently done to it a couple months ago is like insane. No milkshake. That's always a, that's always a concern of mine with GMs. Uh, let's see if we can pull the oil disc stick out and take a look. It's a little dirty, but not bad. It's definitely no milkshake. Again, that's important. So, the only thing that looks kind of sketchy to me is doing these coils around these uh, AC lines right here. These AC lines run directly over the coil, so that sucks. Okay, what do you think, guys? Take her for a drive? I say let's lower this hood. Oh, no, that was me. Okay, all right, we're good. All right, moment of truth. Where's the, where's the dang e-brake on this thing at? Right there. I'm just making sure everything is off. Let's see if we can clear up these windshield wipers a little bit, or this windshield a little bit. Man, she's dirty. Uh, look at that. She is filthy. It helps to be able to see when you're driving, you know? All right. I think we can get out of here. Let's see how she, see how she rides. Uh, according to the Carfax, a lot of the suspension was replaced. And when I say a lot, I mean pretty much everything up front has been replaced within the last six months. Shift. Oh yeah, shift strong. Good oil pressure. Good temperature. I 
I hear a hub bearing. Sounds like a front hub bearing. Yeah, definitely a front hub bearing. What does kind of concern me is the tapping that I am hearing from the front. I mean, misfires happen, but usually you don't hear like a tapping coinciding with the misfire unless it's something kind of serious. You hear that? Yeah, we definitely got a we definitely got a pretty good tapping on one cylinder. I can feel the uh, that humming noise. I can feel it in the steering wheel. I'm guessing it is the right front hub assembly. Shouldn't be too hard to replace that. But before we worry about a hub bearing, definitely got to worry about what this tapping noise is and uh, what's causing this misfire. So. I think the appropriate thing to do at this point would be probably to trailer it, although I'm sure we could drive it and it would probably make it back. Um, it would probably make more sense to trailer it, which sucks because I'd have to drive an hour to go pick up my trailer and pick this thing up, but uh, I don't know. What do you guys think? Do you think we should trailer it or do you think we should just send it as is and drive it to the house? I'm kind of inclined just to drive it to the house, man. Get a diagnostic machine run on it. Find out what's going on. Okay. Well, guys, she runs and drives. I'm going to get it back to IAA. And we'll come back here in just a few minutes. All right, guys. We made it back. Got a funny smell coming inside the cabin. see what's going on here yeah I smell something I don't know what it is though hmm yeah I'm real leery to drive this one guys real real leery to drive this one if i had to guess i would say that the noise i'm hearing is coming from this side it's definitely coming from somewhere over here i can hear it okay i don't see anything smoking so i don't know exactly what i'd be smelling let's take a look underneath and let's see what she looks like. Nothing. No leaks. Not a drop of anything under here at all, guys. Yeah, she actually looks really healthy. Really healthy. There's, there's nothing even leaking on the inside. There's nothing leaking anywhere. Like, this truck has been so well serviced. I wonder why they gave up on it. Probably because they just spent a ton of money on suspension components. Transmission fluid. It's all right. Transmission shifted fine. There was absolutely... Come on, get in there. Absolutely no issues with the, uh, the transmission shifting at all. Just a uh, misfire, a slight tap going on up here. Uh, everything else is good. Let's go see if the headlight washes work. I think I'm going to shut it off. Probably go get the trailer. Yeah, they work. Look, it's all wet. <laughs> Look at that. The headlight washers actually work. That's not something you see every day on these. Usually these don't function anymore. Very cool. Very cool. Overall, guys, I think for 1200 bucks out the door, you can't go wrong with it. You really can't. I also think... This is a great time to put the uh, the Dodge Ram to work. 
So I'll go ahead and shut it off, take the spare set of keys with me. Now maybe I can lock it. Yeah, okay, so she locks good. Good, good. I think this is a perfect opportunity to take this truck and uh, go get the trailer. All right, we just filled up because I'm gonna go try to get this trailer. And I wanted to show you, we've got 536 miles of range to a full tank of diesel. Uh, this cost me $51.63 and it held 26 gallons. We still had about 63 miles to go uh, before we ran out, but I wanted to fill up because it is about 60 miles to AAR headquarters and then probably 65 to 75 miles back to uh, insurance auto auction. So went ahead and filled up, let's fire it up. And I know a lot of people ask what this little yellow light, they're like, is that ABS? Your ABS light's on? That's not ABS, guys. That's my exhaust brake. See? Automatic exhaust brake on, exhaust off, and full exhaust brake on. And although most people would use the exhaust brake for towing, I actually use my full exhaust brake all the time. It kind of sounds like a Jake brake. You know, when, uh, when you let off the gas, you don't have to use your brakes nearly as much. And you can hear the engine go... Brrrr. And what that does is number one, it saves your brakes, and number two, it actually helps to keep the buildup off of your turbo vanes. It's a good thing for your truck, so I just prefer to run it all the time. We're gonna get down to ARHQ. Let's try to grab this trailer and pick up this SUV. All right, guys, we made it down to ARHQ. We got the trailer. I think it looks like it's sitting all right. This is my lowest drop hitch right here. I think it's, it's looking pretty good. You guys comment below, what do you think? What do you think? You tell me. I, I think it looks all right. Yeah, I think it's all right. You guys comment below because you know I'm not a professional at this or anything. We're going to head out right now and go get this thing. But one thing I wanted to show you, I wanted to document this so everybody would know. Before, before uh, we started towing with this, before we hooked anything up to it, 539 miles on the dash, okay? So I don't want, if, in case there's any warranty issues later, anything that requires work. I don't want anybody to come back saying, oh, he was towing with that brand new truck. No, we got it broke in. We got the right miles on it to be towing. So let's put this thing to work. All right, we made it back to IAA. And let me tell you, one of the things I love about this place is with, uh, you know, let me put it like this. One of the things I love about this place is that you can come back later if you don't have time. You know, I was hoping this thing was going to drive to the house. It's not gonna to drive to the house. So, we're able to take an hour drive south to go pick up the trailer and come back an hour. So that's two hours. It is like 7.30 at night. And I am so thankful that they leave the gate open so that you can come back and pick up your, uh, pick up your ride. So we're gonna to have to lower this down as we always do. There we go. Hey, she's already, look at that, she's already trying to lean back on her own. That's actually kind of cool, I like that. She's going back on her own this time. Boy, this trailer's got a little, it's got some scrapes on it. Man, that's sad. That's sad, but at least we're putting her to work, guys. There we go. There we go. I cannot wait to see how this trailer and this truck handles the Denali. So let's get over here, let's grab it, and let's get her loaded up. All right, guys, let's see if we can get big Bertha up here without running into anything or tearing anything up. Come on, old girl. You're a heavy girl. You're a heavy girl. Yes, you are. A little bit further. There we go. There we go. I think I'll back it up just a hair. What do you think? Right there? I think right there is good. Let's set the e-brake and call this a wrap. All right, guys. We got her loaded down. She's strapped up. Strapped on. <laughs> However you want to call it. She should be ready to go. Man, this trailer's great. It really is because there is still plenty of room on this trailer if you wanted to put something bigger. 
Couldn't go a whole lot wider with it, but you could definitely go with something that has a longer wheelbase. So I say, let's get on the road. Let's tow for the first time with the 2500, man. I'm really interested to see, number one, how it pulls with a heavy trailer and a heavy truck. Okay, so gross weight is 7,000 pounds, right? Now, I don't know if that means like maximum loaded capacity or if gross weight is the empty capacity, but either way, it says the gross weight is 7,000 pounds. I'm assuming that that's like the total loaded weight would be 7,000 pounds because it's got two 3,500 pound axles, right? I don't know. I wish I knew for sure like what this thing actually weighed and see what this SUV weighs. I'm sure she weighs, uh, I'm sure she weighs quite a bit. So gross vehicle weight, 6,400 pounds. 6,400 pounds, guys. Wow. Wow. Okay. So this at 6,400 pounds, I, I'm guessing is about what this trailer is designed for, right? <laughs> this should be fun, guys. Let's get this thing on the road. Let's see what kind of... I'm going to reset the fuel economy. Let's see what kind of fuel economy we get. And let's see how she pulls. All right, guys. Here we go. Getting onto the highway. First time. We're going to check the fuel economy. I'm also checking out how it's how it's pulling. And so far, I got to say, it... Uh, she pulls this trailer with this truck on it like it ain't nothing. And I'm not even like hammering on it or anything. Look at the RPMs. She's uh, she's quite comfortable. We're already at 70. Like it's absolutely nothing. You can see back there, maybe, I don't know. Lots of construction, so I'm not going to be recording on here very long because I want to really focus on the road here. As you can see, these orange signs coming up. We're getting into construction, and we're getting into uh, what looks like inclement weather. So, yeah, we may we may just need to try to get this thing home, and let's see what kind of uh, let's see what kind of fuel economy Big Bertha here can get. I mean, you want to talk about loaded down? She's loaded up right now, and I'll tell you this: you can absolutely feel. The weight behind it you can but it's not like when i was towing the s class in the f-150 in the f-150 you could feel just putting the trailer behind it it's weird because with this truck it's kind of on the bouncy side when it's empty but when i put my trailer on the back of it suddenly it was a lot more comfortable whereas the f-150 was comfortable until you loaded it down and then it was bouncy so this truck kind of kind of the opposite of how my F-150 did. Um, and this thing definitely pulls like, like it's nothing. Like this, this, this little, however many pounds we got behind it, 6,500 pound truck and however much that trailer weighs, uh, that's nothing for this truck. So let's get the rest of the way uh, down to the house. That's what we'll do right now. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna make it to ARHQ tonight. It's getting late, it's getting dark. As you can see, it's like 8, 10 uh, at night. Yeah, so it's getting late. It's an hour drive out there. It's an hour drive back, and there are storms coming. So we may just have to conclude this video uh, tomorrow when it's daylight. Handling corners is a little bit different from what I'm used to. Uh, you definitely got to slow it down a little bit. And she definitely got a little bumpy right there. But nothing, uh, nothing major, nothing too severe. So far, I'm feeling really, I'm feeling really confident, comfortable, and and very happy with this old truck, man. Well, old, this old truck. This <laughs> maybe I thought I was in the F-150 for a minute or something. I'm feeling really good about the new truck, guys. I really am. She is doing. And those tow mirrors are great, even though I don't have them uh, posted out like a lot of people do. They they flip up so that you have really long extended tow mirrors. There ain't no need for that. You know, with this trailer behind me, I can see just fine through these mirrors what's going on back there. Well, we made it. We're parked actually right across the street from ARHQ. You can see the yellow charger right there in the driveway. Um, we parked across the street because we had significant rainfall last night. And that means my yard is going to be a swamp. And I'll take you guys over there in just a minute. 
and let you see where I actually got the truck stuck the last time it rained during that tornado video that I shared with you guys on Friday. Uh, yeah, this truck was buried to the axle. And the funny part is, and I know a lot of you are going to say, if you had 4x4, that wouldn't have happened. Yes, it would have. The front of this truck literally sank all the way to the torsion bars. And keep in mind, guys, this isn't four-wheel drive. Okay, so it's not because the front dug itself into the ground. My ground, my yard over there is so soft that the truck literally sank when we had that torrential downpour. The front end sank all the way to the torsion bars. The rear end sank all the way to the differential. I'll take you guys over there and show you that in just a minute. So I'm not taking a chance. I'm going to take this trailer probably back to my house with me. We'll have to come back here after this had a couple days to dry out. But we made it. And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what the fuel economy was like on the truck. And we're going to go over all that here in just a minute. But first, let's get this thing off of the trailer. I know how much you guys love watching this trailer do its little tilty thing and everything. So uh, I'm going to do that for you real quick. And then we can go over fuel economy, how the truck handled. And we'll even get into running a quick diagnostic on this to figure out what cylinder is causing us the problem. All right. Let's get her done. Yeah, man, I, that tapping though, guys. It almost, you know what it sounds like? It sounds like a spark plug that's not sealed into its well. You know what I mean? It sounds like a spark plug that is not all the way tightened or <laughs> a spark plug that has potentially blown out of its hole or somebody did a tune-up and stripped it and just shoved it back in there. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't know for sure. All right. Another car off the trailer, guys. Let's get this thing moved over to the house. And we'll go over the rest of this stuff. All right, guys. I know this is going to be difficult to see. We had two codes. It was a PO300, which is a random misfire. I thought that was interesting. So I cleared all the codes. Um, the other one, I can't remember what it was, but it was not specific to a to a cylinder-specific misfire. So we're going to do a power balance test. We're going to tell it continue, and we should be able to see on this uh, right here, cylinder one, dead miss. Okay, so sometimes the codes don't always work out for you, right? And sometimes you got to dig a little bit deeper. So a power balance test is going to show me right here. And like I said, I know it's difficult to see, but current cylinder misfire on, on, or current cylinder is number one, and you can see the misfire is just constant. Okay, so we know it's definitely cylinder one. We can check cylinder two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, all cylinders are good except for cylinder one, and that's good because cylinder one is at the front of the engine. So this should be fairly easy to figure out at least if it's a coil or a spark plug. First thing I'm gonna do is disconnect the plug wire from number one and see if we have any spark coming out of it. So on GMs, finding cylinder one is very easy, guys. In every General Motors engine that I'm aware of, cylinder one is always gonna be the driver's side front. So we simply lean over. Here's coil number one right here, and you just kind of follow it down to, I'm gonna take it off the coil first she's on there this will give me a little bit more wiggle room down here well uh, there we go pull it off the plug like that okay take a look at the spark plug wire here and see if we can see any visible signs of damage and i don't next what i'm going to do is i'm going to plug the uh, coil wire back into the coil and i know a lot of people are going to cringe when i do this but i am then going to take this and i'm going to sit it somewhere about right here and i'm going to start it up and i'm going to look for an arc coming from the uh the center of the coil arcing against the uh valve cover and at that point if we don't see anything sparking out of it you know we have a pretty good idea that it's going to be a coil i hope it's just a coil but it could never be that easy Ah, I hear spark. I hear it. Yes. 
You see spark coming off of the uh, heat shield isolator, insulator right here. I don't want to get too close to it because I ain't trying to get myself shot. So she is sparking. Let's see if I can grab it without getting electrocuted here. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so I have a theory, and it could be totally wrong, but uh, <laughs> I don't believe it should be sparking off of that uh, that insulator. This piece right here is designed to protect the boot from the heat of the exhaust. So you can take this off, and we should be able to... Well, wouldn't it be great if it was just a plug wire? I mean, how awesome would that be? I mean, that'll never happen, but uh, it should not be arcing off of this, guys. And since it is, hmm, what do you think? I'm thinking we have a bad plug wire. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug it on again without this, uh, without this insulator. It should not be arcing through this, guys. It absolutely should not. So the fact that it's arcing through this gives me a pretty good idea that we have a leaking spark plug boot and that would just be uh forgive me if this offends anybody but that would be the bee's knees guys like that would just be too good to possibly be true and i would be absolutely stoked so i want to sit it back up here i'm gonna start it again and see if we can see any Any leaking from the side, I... No? I hear a steady spark coming out of it. but I don't see anything coming out of the side now that I've got it off. So it could have, it could have been arcing up against this coil at the tip and then grounding from the side. That would be my guess, dang it. So that means it's gonna require further investigation and we're not doing that in this video, ladies and gentlemen. This video was about several things one was purchasing this, figuring out what was wrong with it, at least finding out if it actually runs and drives, which it does. The next one was about the truck. And speaking of the truck, let's get back here so I can show you where it got stuck. So when this place has torrential rains, I did not know this before, but I know it now, this turns in to like quicksand. Uh, I mean, it, it, it just, it was unbelievable how far everything sank. Look at this. This is uh, from the center to the top, I would say six inches or so. Six inches or so that the rear of this truck sank into the ground. Look at this. Uh, and four wheel drive would not have saved me. And, and if you look right here, you see this bare spot right between the wheels. What do you think that bare spot was? That was the differential digging into the ground. So Austin, thank you, man. His girl, Kimberly, thank you so much because all of us came out here and we dug this out. And here's the thing. I, I know a lot of you are going to swear that 4x4 would have made all the difference. But here's the front wheels, guys. The front wheels on this truck do not spin. And they were dug just as deep as the rear. The torsion bars were literally on the ground. This, uh, this bare spot right here. I don't know how well it comes out on video, but there's a bare spot going all the way across. Yeah, that's that's like the that was either the bumper or the frame of the truck. This truck was sunk all the way down, all the way down, guys. So, you know, lesson learned. But I I wasn't gonna hide it from you. Yes, the truck sank. Yes, it got stuck. Uh, the Marauder also got stuck, and the Marauder didn't even do anything. It was just sitting here. I tried to move it from where I had it parked under those trees, and as soon as I went forward, front tire sank here. You can see front tire sank, front tire sank, rear tire, rear tire. The damn Marauder sank too. We had to dig this one out as well, so 
four by four would not have saved me in this particular situation. So that brings us back to the Ram 2500. Let's uh, turn the ignition on. There we go. Hopefully it will stop beeping soon and hopefully it won't make us actually start it. Ah, no, no, no radio, no radio. Okay, come on. Trailer brake connected. Go to vehicle settings to set up trailer. Yeah, we've already done that. Okay, so it's gonna make me start it, fine. We'll start it. We'll start it. All right, here we go. This is the this is the numbers I was looking for, guys. This is what I was trying to get you guys into here, was to see we have driven the truck a total of 678 miles now, and on this trip, this trip right here was strictly for the for towing. This was loaded totally with the the truck, the trailer, completely loaded, 70.8 miles, 14.1 miles a gallon, and it was a total of an hour and 25 minutes driving. Now, I think we can scroll through this and go to trip B. Um, this is since I started from the time I went up to, uh, I think this is, no, this is from the time I actually filled up the tank and went and picked up the trailer, went and picked up the truck or the SUV and then brought it down here. So total on the trip of going and picking up this uh, SUV, we got 16.3 miles a gallon and I think I just messed that up there, didn't I? There we go. And on this particular trip, we got 14 miles a gallon. So I was hoping to see better fuel economy than that. I'm not gonna lie, my uh, twin turbo EcoBoost Ford F-150 got 14 miles a gallon on the way back from Dallas, Texas, picking up the Mercedes S430. Now with that said, the S430 was lighter by probably a thousand pounds than the GMC Envoy. So this thing definitely had more of a load on it. And I've also been told by a lot of people that as this truck breaks in, the fuel economy will get better. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what I've heard. So we've got almost 700 miles on her now. I will say this, even if 14 miles a gallon is as good as this thing gets pulling that trailer and the biggest SUV, I think that's the biggest thing I've ever pulled to date, was this trailer paired with that massive SUV. Um, even if this is as good as it gets, am I satisfied with the purchase over continuing to own the F-150? Absolutely, because this thing pulls like, I don't wanna say like there's nothing behind it, but it pulls so much easier. Getting onto the interstate is so much easier. When you have to pass or move over, it does it with ease. You can hit the throttle and it just, it just goes, it really does. It takes corners better. It's not nearly as rough riding as the F-150 when it's loaded down. If anything, when this thing is loaded down, it rides better than when it's unloaded. So with that, I am still happy with it. Now let's move on to the Carfax report of the GMC Envoy. So here's the Carfax report that I have for the Envoy. We'll start with its history-based value. Uh, it says it retails for $43.20. I feel like that's on the high side. I would expect in this area, $3,000, maybe $3,500 if it's running properly. So it's had two previous owners, which is excellent. That's a, that's a selling point right there. No accidents reported to Carfax and 23 service records. These are all very good things. Now let's move on to some of the things that I think are most important. First and foremost, regular oil changes. This thing was regularly serviced. That's a huge selling point. But once you get past the first five pages showing exceptional dealer service, we get into interesting things like this. Um, late 2018, lower control arms replaced, upper control arms replaced. Okay, and that was at 167,000 miles. It had upper and lower control arms replaced. That's a pretty big deal. All right, next, at uh, one of 2019, 170,000 miles, brakes and rotors resurfaced. Then at 174,000, cooling system checked, radiator cap replaced, cooling system serviced. Next, 425 of 19, we have Front struts replaced, strut mounts replaced, alignment. Okay, so far so good. 726 of 19 at 180,000 miles. Differential fluid, flush changed, transfer case fluid, flush changed, oil filter changed, steering gear replaced. 
the, the gearbox was replaced. The rear crank oil seal replaced. Exhaust pipe seal replaced. This one right here, guys, this is massive. At 180K, it had basically all the fluids flushed, the steering gear replaced, and the rear main seal replaced. That's why the truck doesn't leak anything. Um, then at 181,000 miles, axles checked and oil pan gasket replaced as well. Are you kidding me? And then the best part is as we get into 2020, all right, 2020, January 3rd, 187,000 miles, oil and filter changed right before this truck was donated. In other words, this vehicle was well cared for. We, we really need to fix this misfire. And that's it. Like, it's already clean. You may clean the wheels and tires, give it a bath, get the writing off of it. But this thing is exceptionally clean. We'll need a hub bearing, and we got to fix the misfire. As long as we can do those things, I see no reason with this Carfax report why that, why that truck, SUV, should not bring around $3,500 on the low side, $3,000. And the best part of something like this is once you get it resolved, you can feel good about selling it, guys. You can feel really good about selling it because you've got a Carfax report that says this thing was well-maintained. It's got new suspension, new fluids, fresh alignment, this thing should be good to go for a long, long time to come. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna get out of here. There's a million and one things I've gotta get done today, including the next video diagnosing and figure out what's wrong with the Envoy, the misfire. Next, we gotta change the rack and pinion in the Dodge Charger police car because that car is out of here. It's done, it's sold. Uh, we gotta replace the high pressure power steering hose on the Mercedes S430. And yeah, there's more. I got to go get the cobalt. Yeah, the cobalt, the intercooler pump has to be replaced. I got to drag it back down here. Then the awesome thing I think you guys are going to enjoy, Weird Beard is going to handle the bodywork on the Cobalt SS. So all the little dings and dents and things that ain't quite right, he's going to handle making that thing look perfect so that we can send it off for paint and make it look brand spanking new again so big shout out thank you to weird beard if you're not subscribed to him go subscribe to him for sure weird beard on youtube guys thank you to all of you for watching if you enjoyed the content give the video a big thumbs up and don't forget you can hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on my future videos you can follow me on facebook and instagram at auto auction rebuilds and until next time stay safe out there everybody i will catch you all very soon in the next one